Warning, the Gel Blaster toy shown in this video could be mistaken for a real firearm. Do not take Gel Blasters into public spaces or it will likely be treated as real by authorities. Gel Blasters are classified as toys in Queensland regulations, however this may be different in your state or territory. Be sure to check your local laws before buying or ordering a Gel Blaster. Also, ensure you use adequate eye protection whenever using Gel Blasters. Stay safe everyone. G'day, g'day, welcome back into the studio for another short and sweet review. This time I'm going to go back and look at a couple of small ones, older ones, that sort of thing, which aren't necessarily worth a full review in of themselves, like I mentioned, but so that way you can make a decision whether or not it's worthwhile for you to buy. One we're looking at today is the SKD Glock G18. Um, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. Now, generally speaking, out of the automatic mag for pistols, this is probably the better one you can get in reality and that's not due to it's got massively superior performance it's more a case of form factor and ease of use and parts that sort of thing but of course like everything personal preference is king something i will note off the bat on this one is i'm not going to show you necessarily a huge amount of gameplay because i don't run in games with this i don't think that's what it is for and i think if you're getting this and intending to use that as your only blaster you're going to be very limited on a skirmish field at least um, Keep in mind, I do use it as a backup, as secondary, for a few reasons. One, if I run out of ammo on my ACR, which I'll try and find you some clips of what it, when that actually happened for later on when I was running the ACR in the Rocky, Seeky Blasters Rocky field, falling back to this in a close range field was definitely entirely viable and it was useful. It did definitely do its job and I do like it for that. It's a good backup. The other reason why I like it is generally speaking, most rules, most rules, most field have a minimum engagement distance rule where if you're within a couple of meters, you call it shoot, point and call that bang first or shoot um, rather than actually pulling the trigger, especially when you've got modified blasters and young kids running around, that sort of thing. Most fields, not all, will accept using a pistol at that range without a problem because they are quite significantly underpowered consider, compared to you know, the bigger rifles, that sort of thing. And there is limitations on what they can do anyway. So I get it because quite often in a game, I'll point my rifle at someone and go bang, and they won't take it because they either won't hear me or they won't realize. And now sometimes I just point the blaster to a part of the body where it's not really gonna hurt like the leg or something or with heavy clothing and shoot them there. That way they very quickly realize they've been hit. Um, but now this means I can just use the pistol. I don't even have to hesitate. I can just pull the pistol around and go bang with it because it doesn't hurt that much, so. Anyway, what we'll do, we'll jump into it. Now, it is very much a plastic blaster. This is a, not actually that new of a design. It's a fairly older model uh, blaster that's come out. So it is pretty much entirely plastic. Something to note, a lot of people are probably gonna wanna do that. yeah, you wanna rack the slide back and all that. Don't do that because you're probably gonna break the inside components of it and then it won't work as someone that I know has found out the hard way, that'd be Lieutenant Dan. So don't go racking the the slide, it's not designed for that sort of thing, so it will end up breaking. The entire body, like I said, is plastic, and you can see that. Uh, there are some interesting markings up here, which again, Chinese copyright apparently doesn't exist, because those right there, even in the world of airsoft, copyright through Glocks was very difficult. In fact, it's only recently started up again. Um, but the Chinese don't care, so there you go. Uh, you do have a finger guard here you, with your orange trigger. The barrel is also orange, the outer barrel, sorry, outer barrel, inner barrel, while the rest of the blaster is black. You do have a cutout here for where the shell ejection port would be if it was real, and again, same for the grooves here for pulling back. You do have some nice little iron sights just there and there. So if I go like that, you can sort of probably see where it's meant to go. Iron sights on these, fairly pointless, so it is what it is. They're nice to have. On the bottom here, there is a section which is grooved out where I believe you can get a rail attachment and attach some things there, like torches, that's the thing if you really want to. Uh, I did try to attach my zoom cam onto that just for the purpose of the, this review and it didn't seem to work. So it's not quite a normal size rail. I think it has always been a slightly different one. Um, however, you could probably do some work there and you could probably get a part which would clip straight onto that if you really wanted to run an attachment. Big thing to note about this is unlike pretty much every other gel blaster that's electric, there is no removable battery with connection and battery holder. So the battery is actually hard mounted in this bottom section here, or well, hard mounted. It's semi-permanently mounted in this section here. How to charge and turn it on? Just on the bottom here of the actual pistol. So if you have a look, see a little sticker there with on off and charge. So pretty straightforward, we're off at the moment. You clip that to the left and it's on, and that's now working. That little port there, you get a little USB uh, plug-in wire, plugs into there, 
a little light on the wire saying whether or not it's charged, and that's it. Something to note, I have heard that if you leave these turned on sitting around, the battery drains itself, so I recommend turning it off when you're not going into a game or when it's going to be sitting in the container through the week while you're waiting for the weekend. That is just me, but yeah, that is what it is. A couple of other things, so slide catch mouldings and various other things on the left hand side, they don't do or mean anything, same with that fire select there. On the right hand side though, you do have a little button here, and that button does do something. So this is currently on, and it's currently in semi-automatic fire. So you pull the trigger, you only get one shot. Straightforward. If you press that, goes to full automatic. So it is nice that they have that uh, electric automatic fire select built into it. You just press the button and it'll change between the two. It only has semi or full auto. There's no off, on off, because that's what the switch is for. So that's nice. Not only that, something this has that most rifles still don't have is if you hold that button in, it has a mag prime. So you gotta hold the button in, it'll take a couple, it'll take half a second before it'll realize, and it'll start priming the mag. Now the mag is tiny, which I'll show you in a minute, but it's nice that it has that, especially on this small pistol. A couple other things on the left hand side, you do have a mag release catch just here. You push that, mag comes out, just out of the grip, like anyway. The grip is molded with some different models and uh, sizing on the sides. It's nothing special, but I mean, it's nice, as well as some little thumb grips there, which is ambidextrous, so that's cool. Mag release isn't ambidextrous, but you can't have everything. Something to note about this is you can buy a lot of fairly cheap holsters, that sort of thing, for these to go in. Um, they do work, however, be mindful, that mag catch right there constantly gets hit, and the amount of time someone's been running along and the mag's fallen out, right as the game started, uh, we've lost count of. It pretty much it's happened to anyone who's ever had one of these, so... What I do is I actually tape the mag in place because I run it in my pocket. Um, that way it's never gonna fall out. So that's just me though. Some people, you can get ones which are designed to go on properly, although because it's not quite a normal design where that is, it doesn't really work. You might have to modify the holster, which some people do do. Um, just be very mindful of that fact. So as with the magazine itself, pull that out. It is standard plastic, fairly small, automatic, so don't get too much water in it. Little door on the back here where you just chuck your gels in like so. If I grab my festive bottle, I shall chuck some in there. So these are the gels I'll be using for the purposes of the review. Keep in mind they are the heavy milkies. Just go back to the semi. So it can sometimes be a little bit tricky on the bottom there, just be mindful of that. And then like I said, hold that in. There we go, we're now charged. So cool. The T-piece is also a strange design, it sort of goes up and around, so it is quite common for these to sometimes get jammed up if the gels aren't quite right. So make sure you're using good gels in these. Like not super good gels, but just not crappy random mixes, or I've heard of quite a few people having issues with the red ones because they go oversizing, but I haven't used them myself. So we're now ready to go. That's pretty much it. It is a very basic blaster. I mean, it's a pistol. What else are you gonna expect? So what I'll do, I'll set up the chrono, do a quick chrono test through just to show you what you get. I'm not expecting it to be a huge amount. I might show you some accuracy at 10 meters outside and then we'll come back for the last section. Righto, so clock 18, chrono test. So, definitely seems to be the king of consistency. <laughs> Sitting just at a touch over 130 FPS each time. That's pretty good. Um, I don't know why it screwed up there. That might be some of the gels I used weren't great at the time. But yeah, so, it's actually not half bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still only 135 FPS, but that's why they don't really hurt that much. So, oh, well, sit outside.
can't believe we're going from that far. There. Yeah, I can see him. Move to the other one, stay low. Stay low, stay low. Go low, move up to that pallet. You should be able to get him. No, no, that was me. You're right. Shit. Gotcha. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. Behind you. Up the back, the medic's behind you. To the left, to the left, to the left. Get up, move up. Pin the medics in the base. I'll give you the choice to surrender. So I hope that range and chrono test sort of showed you the limitations slash uh, realistically the best you're going to get out of these. There's not really anything you can do to modify them. Um, they're a fairly basic plastic pistol. So you can't expect more out of it than you're going to get because it's not going to work. It's just limited. It is what it is. It's a very small thing. There's only so much it can do. Please be mindful that, like I said, you can't necessarily think that these are going to be as good or equivalent to one of these. They're just never going to reach that standard. So as long as you use it within its limitations, you could get some good use out of it. Pardon me. You could definitely get some good use out of it. Now, that limitation is, like I said, as a sidearm. I don't recommend running this around unless you're running, say, a shield or you're just using it as a backup. It's not a bad option. Definitely. I use it quite a bit nowadays as that. So it is a good option to have, especially for the reasons I've already mentioned. Um, you definitely won't go wrong if you pick it up, as long as you're picking it up for the right reasons. As long as you know what you are planning to do with it, it should be fine. Um, recommended accessories. That's annoying. Uh, recommended accessories. Well, the only real accessory you can get for this is an extended magazine. Now, if you end up using this back up quite a lot or you're at a CQB field, that sort of thing, wouldn't be a bad idea. You could get an extended magazine just to give you a bit more time and ammo out of it. Um, more magazines, I think, if you're going through a lot of magazines, it might be you're relying this maybe a little too much. Depends on if you're playing extended games, that sort of thing. So there is always that option. Um, that's about it. I know you can get a 3D printed hop-up that sits over the top of this, and apparently it worked quite well. I'm not going to bother because it's a pistol. I'm using it for very specific scenarios. I'm not trying to use long range, that sort of thing. Obviously, like I mentioned, personal preference is king. If you prefer to get a bit of extra range and do that, then go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think that it's not necessarily what this... It's trying to ask too much of a platform that's not designed for that sort of level. Um, so, yeah. It is what it is. Not a bad buy. As long as you understand that you are not buying a full-on rifle. And it's not going to be able to match those. It's not bad by any means, though. And if you do buy it, you're probably going to be fairly happy with it. So, those are my thoughts on that one. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Happy to continue talking about it. It is one of those ones which some people like, some people don't like. Um... Yeah, but that's about it. If you liked the video, give it a like, uh, share it around if you've got someone who might be interested in this or might be curious on whether or not it's worthwhile. Uh, keep the conversation going down below. If you'd like to support the channel, once again, shout out to channel sponsors. Uh, you can find links to my PayPal and buy me a Pepsi Max slash coffee down in the description below. But that's all I've got for you today. So with that, I'll catch you next time. It's always fun. <laughs>